Welcome to the Queen Anne's County Board of Education work session for August 17th, 2022. Can we stand for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. You've had a chance to look at the agenda. Have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, ayes have it. Okay, we've had a chance to look at our uh, approval minutes for August the 3rd closed session. Has everybody had a chance to review those? Motion to accept uh, the minutes for August 3rd, 2022 closed session. Second. Motion to second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Uh, approve to the August 3rd open session. Everybody's had a chance to look at those. Motion to approve the minutes for August 3rd, 2022 open session. Second. Motion second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. And last is closed sessions for August 11th. Motion to approve the minutes for August 11th, 2022 closed session. Second. A motion second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Have it. Thank you. Okay, and next on our agenda is summer programming. Uh, Mr. Kintop and Amy Smith. Good evening, President Smith, Dr. Salins, members of the board and executive team. I am Kevin Kentop, the Arise Alternative Program Administrator. Good evening, and I'm Amy Smith, Supervisor for K-12 Mathematics and Gifted and Talented. So this evening, we're going to talk a little bit about the instructional programming that occurred throughout the summer, the different students that had an opportunity to experience um, camps, enrichments, and summer school, and the overall evaluations of summer programming. And the first part, I get the pleasure of talking to you a little bit about the summer camps. This was the first year that we were able to offer summer camps for grade students three through eight. We had an art in nature camp, a STEM or STEAM camp, we had a drama camp, and we also had a team sports camp. There was 145 students across grades three through eight that were involved in the different camps, and this year it was paid through the GEARS grant. And next summer, we'll have enough funding to be able to run the camps one more time. And so you can see up here a variety of pictures from our students that they were on their nature walk, pulling um, different pieces from nature themselves to inspire their sketch and their art projects. Um, you see some dance and drama where they were learning their, their sketches up here. You see the development of their STEAM Rube Goldberg projects. Uh, in this one, you see a lot of the finished art projects. They had one of the campsites did a walk through and had students that were actually in their enrichment program come and get to see the different art exhibits um, during a, a break time that they had in the course of the day. And you can see the final product of the group that had the play and put on. They did a phenomenal job with four weeks to put together a play. And you notice they were very creative to do backdrops and, and costumes among them. And when I had the opportunity to go through the evaluations, but also talking to students students throughout the program, I was asking, are you enjoying this? Is this, has it been fun? Have you learned new things? And almost every one of the students asked, are we going to have this again next year? Because they really did enjoy this experience. Um, I ran into parents on the final day for presentations and several of them said their kids haven't stopped talking. When they come off the bus, they're like talking nonstop, telling about the projects and the different activities that they had the chance to participate in. Each of the students also received a little swag bag um, for being a member of the camp and they gave them a water bottle, a backpack, a notepad for the different projects and um, activities that they would be doing. And I did also bring water bottles over here for the board members to be able to have one from our Explore and Engage camps. 
Next, we're going to talk about the summer enrichment program, which was the K to eight program, similar to what we ran last summer. Um, we had six sites this year instead of five. We added uh, Southersville Middle one this year because we were able to do it staffing wise. Our numbers, we had 122 students involved at Mattapique. Mattapique, remember, is a South County program, so it included Mattapique Elementary, Canal and Elementary, Bayside Elementary, and both of the middle schools on the island, which is why the numbers are larger there. Um, the other larger 195 is Queen Anne's that en encompass Centerville Elementary, Kennard Elementary, Centerville Middle School. Every other one was, it's an individual site, um, and we had uh, a, a, good, a good attendance this year, a good number of students who were able to partake in, in the program. In our program, there are two pieces. It is focused on English language arts and math. The English language arts focus the first couple of weeks on um, literary text, themes, central ideas, figurative language, and so forth. The second two weeks, they worked on informational texts. Uh, once again, supporting details, central themes, um, and they enforced what they learned during the school year. So it is the skills that they were supposed to have gotten this year in their grade level reinforced over the summer. Um, teachers, once again, we provide them with the lessons, we provide them with the support tools, but they are able to take those pieces and teach however they want. And, and just one little example that I did bring tonight was when, when they were doing a middle school central uh, idea, she went ahead and made a team newsletter in the class. For the, they, the kids wrote all the stories about the Delaware Fair, um, about soccer, about Centerville Middle School next year. And so they created their articles for this, and then they switched articles, and they had to identify the pieces, the, the theme, the central idea, and supporting details. So it wasn't just a rotary, here's the text, let's go through and write some things down and identify stuff. And then the second portion of each of the students' days was in mathematics. And again, in mathematics, we focused around core learning strands that were the grade level, but also really had a component of fluency and building some of those um, mathematical strategies within their class time. And so during the instruction, they had some small group instruction, they had some whole group instruction, but they also had opportunities to do center experiences, which gave them times to be able to play some of the mathematic games and use a lot of the math manipulatives to really help develop a little bit deeper fluency for some of the students skills so that they're really ready for this fall as they come back. The extended school year works right in conjunction with the enrichment courses. So through this, we served 175 students in academic and speech services over the summer programming. It is really important to note that this really focuses around students' IEP learning goals and objectives. So the special educators are there to really push into the instructional setting, provide those extra small group supports, but also key strategies as they're working on those independent activities. It's, it gave students a more inclusive type learning environment instead of a pull out experience, allowing them really to interact with the students and gain a lot of those instructional strategies in both mathematics and their English language arts. The third program that we had going on was our high school credit recovery program. We have a partnership, um, we have a contract with Edmentum. Um, Edmentum allows us to use their platform to create our own custom courses to be able to provide our high school students with academic courses for credit recovery so they can get their credits up to speed. Um, this summer we had 191 parents who uh, signed their children up to be part of the high school summer school recovery program. Uh, of that, 180 of the students attempted recovery. I say that because 191 parents signed kids up, 180 students participated. There were still some students that didn't, even though their parents signed them up for it, they didn't want to be a part of the program. Of those 180 students, we had um, 268 credits that were recovered. We had 99 students who recovered a single credit and we had 81 students that recovered more than one credit. Um, it's very important to note that the purpose of the summer program is really to keep the kids up to speed with their graduation cohort. So of our students, we had 41 students who, if they wouldn't have taken summer school courses, would have been what is traditionally known as retained, but in the high school setting, it means they still would have been considered a freshman instead of a sophomore, or still a sophomore instead of a junior. So you have to have six credits to be a sophomore, 12 to be a junior, 18 to be a senior. 41 of them 
because of what they did this summer, were able to reach that number. And almost 70 of them were able to get off of that bottom number and give themselves a little bit of leeway as they move forward for graduation. So um, I, I would say we had a very successful program. Um, this is the longest running summer program that we have, and it's evolved over the years. And I would say 180 active students is one of the largest we've seen. And then one thing, if I add this right, 99 students receive one credit, 81 received more than one, mm -hmm. that equals 180. So every, no, more than one, that means they could have had two, no, some got three. Right, but what, what I'm saying is the 99 students plus 81 student equals 180. So every student that was in this program at least received one credit for what I'm reading on this. Right, minus the 11 whose parents signed them up and they did, did not. But the ones that did come, right. Absolutely. 180 did. So Absolutely. every student that participated in this program got at least one and possibly, possibly two. Possibly more. So Absolutely. everybody made progress yes. that was in yes. this program. Mm -hmm. The other summer program that we had, and this is also a, another long-standing summer program that's here, was our migrant program. The migrant program starts a week earlier than our other summer programs did and ended a week later, and they have the extended day because these students get really fully immersed in English language and some of the cultural experiences while really preparing them to get ready for this fall entry into the school level. Um, they had many different organizations that helped support extra food, extra activities. Um, they had a volunteer, they had plenty of volunteers to offer some family nights throughout the summer programming as well. I have a question about the Christ Church. Did they reach out to y'all and offer that, or is that just a partnership they have with that school? I believe or? it is a partnership that they've had over the years. That that is that is part because we also service not only Queen Anne students in migrant program, but a couple of the neighboring counties also send migrant students into this program. And Dr. Sprinkle and I were there. We actually talked with them that day about it. That Christ Church was involved in helping to support their program this summer. Mm -hmm. Um, in conclusion about all of our summer programs, we had over 800 students involved in some sort of program um, over the summer. The great thing about, I feel, our summer offerings this year is that we hit every level of student that we have, from a student who may need special needs and need extra support, all the way to our gifted and talented students from pre-K to 12th grade. We had opportunities for kids to participate in a number of things, and I think that's hugely beneficial to look at in the big picture. We had 100 and, over 160 adults directly servicing students. So that's your paraprofessionals, your teachers, you had site directors at each of the schools. We had f nursing full time at every school to handle anything that was going on there. So there were 160 folks in the building working with the kids, but probably just as many folks behind the scenes, from here in the board setting up curriculum to custodians moving furniture from an elementary school to the high school so that the little kids had the right stuff to sit in. Um, it's this from Sodexo helping out with all food. There was just, this is not a, um, and I'll, I'll, just because we're sitting here, this isn't a Kevin and Amy mm -hmm. thing. This this started last mm -hmm. January with a with a starter team and then it went out and there's, there's hundreds of people that made this happen. Bus drivers, bus aides, all that kind of stuff. So I'm, I'm grateful to everybody um, that was part of the program. The one thing that we have done is since we have so many programs, we've been doing some debriefing already um, from this summer to look at how things might be able to go better next year. Um, every one of these four programs comes from a different funding source. So you have a GEARS grant, you have a migrant uh, grant program, you have special ed with their ESY services, and then you have our summer enrichment, which has been run through our ESSER funding program. So some of these we know we're gonna continue next year, some we know we're gonna have to look at and find possible other funding sources for. Um, so we've already started that. Actually, I would say, Mr. Pinder, we had our first debrief the first week of summer school um, about transportation to make sure that next year we're ready to go. So um, we're, we're already thinking next summer. Was there a max capacity um, for the camp, the camps, or the enrichment program, so, and did so we reach that capacity? For camps, uh, we had initially in the grant set the maximum capacity to be about 18 students per camp itself. Mm -hmm. um, most of my most of the camps got close to 18. I had one that actually filled the 18. That was at one of my STEAM camps. Um, we had to run two sections of STEAM camp at Mattapique Middle because since we made some adjustments as far as locations. So 
I didn't hit maximum capacity in every one. And we ran into a little bit of attendance here and there because there were other camps that parents had paid for. And so th there was a gap in it. And at one point that one week was a little bit thin and then the next week we picked up again. So, but overall we were close to the maximum capacity in the ones that we ran. But I have the opportunity again for next year to run them and I'm hoping now because of the excitement that was really generated from parents and students that we'll see maximum capacity with an option of maybe doing two of each of the themes in, in the sites. As far That's as the great. summer enrichment program goes, yeah. our, our classroom sizes are 12 to 15 students because we don't want it to get too large. That's how you get the benefit of a summer program. We did not hit capacity across the board. Um, we ran into a lot more parents this year than we have in the past that are just like, no, my kid is taking a break this year. Um, but Dr. Sprankle and I have already started planning how we can maximize our capacity and seating next year, having more of a procedure that besides our targeted students, how we can pull in more students to fill that. Um, the uh, the PF, I mean the ESY program, the extended school year. Yes, they met their. They have to meet every every student's need. So um, they they maximize what they had. And as I said, 180 students in the high school program. There isn't a cap for us. If 300 students need to regain right. credits, we look for more teachers and we, we open up more classrooms and we do what we can with that. So that there's really no capacity for the right. high school. Is that a gaga ball pit? It is a gaga ball pit. So each of the sites, I used part of the grant to get a gaga ball pit for each of the sites that did not currently have one. Um, and any of the camper groups, when they did some of their rotations and breaks, they joined in there. The team sports maximized the use of the gaga pit. Um, but that was an added bonus for the students. They, yeah, was, I, there was many of them that wrote, what was the best part? Love gaga pit time, you know? So. I was going to say, you might want to advertise that a little, <laughs> emphasize that for next year. I don't know what it is about gaga. It, well, it but, has generated boy. quite the buzz for adults yeah. and students. I would say a lot of adults learned what a gaga pit was. <laughs> the, the one other thing that I want to say as far as the camps, the piece about the camps, the nice thing is that it was different. Kids were learning and they were interacting and growing socially and they were really thinking and problem solving and being creative and designing their own projects throughout. But it was different than being seated in a classroom and having talking time and you know and direct instructional time and then some independent practice and so i think there was just a very different uh, overall everyone said it felt like a camp that even though we were in school and we were in classes it felt like a camp and the teachers who worked them you could see on them that it was in a sense a, a break that they needed after having a mm -hmm. tough year in a sense you know they they seem to enjoy it almost as much as the kids did working in this yeah. camp environments i do want to add one additional thank you and i didn't put it on my slide and that is a, a group of folks that don't always get recognized and that's the administrators at the buildings where we had these even though i had site coordinators in the buildings all of the administrations of the home buildings took it on to if they needed help um queen anne's we had every program possible running at Queen Anne's and the administrative staff um, with under Mr. Schreckengoss, they were willing to help every day, whatever was needed. Um, same thing at Mattapique, we have multiple schools and if their school wasn't a host, like Bayside or Ken Allen Elementary School, they weren't hosting one, they took turns taking time over and spending a week at the program so that they had additional administrative support. So I want to thank all the administrators that supported the programs too. Yeah, great job to everybody. For sure. Thank you. Now, most of the people, Queen Anne's County teachers that are doing, running this and signing up for it? This year, I believe we were at 100% that were Queen Anne's Good. County. Yes. Everybody was, was staff, either teacher or support staff that was. That were either either employed last year or were newly employed coming up this year and worked for I'll us. even mm -hmm. help right. some. That sounds very successful. Okay. Well, I appreciate what you guys have done and thank all your staff and people that did it. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, uh, skeet shooting club update, Mr. Pinder and Dr. Yeah. Sellins. Well, just very informal. We know that this is something that's near and dear to the board, and so we felt like we would just make sure that we have a kind of a update, you know, out to the public and everything. So Sid's the one who's had the conversation, so I'll allow him to <clears throat> go ahead and move So I, I would just like to say the, the team they had this year consisted of uh, 10 student athletes from um, Ken Allen High School and Queen Anne's County High School. Um, Coach uh, Sean Connolly did a great job um, with those students, and I know some of you have been able to go out there and, and, and witness that. Um, 
they were very successful, um, especially in the um, trap division where they finished the regular season in the state of Maryland third. They came in um, during the state tournament in second. And there's some really standout uh, student athletes there with John Doolin, he placed second in the novice division. McCollin Conley placed third place for junior varsity. Austin Watkins placed second place for junior varsity. And Caitlin Lee was first place for the female division. Um, and she also finished the season in second place. Um, you know, this is something that gives the students an opportunity who may not be on the traditional, you know, soccer, um, you know, football opportunity path, something like this, you know, keeps them engaged in the school. So this past year was a trial period um, and it, very well. So next year we're opening it up. Each team, Queens County High School will have their own team. Ken Island High School will have their own team. Um, 20, we're going to cap it right now at 20 students at each school because remember it's 10 students per coach. Um, and I've had conversations with uh, you know Mr. Connolly about that, um, and not going way too you know big too soon. Take small steps at a time, and he's he's been really good about it. Um, and so I, that's the course that we're going to go. And I, I'd like to also say, Mr. Connolly put a lot of time and effort into this as far as you know writing for grants to get funded, um, fundraising. Not one student had to contribute any kind of funds to this. Um, they were able to support their own. Um, so by moving forward now with the, the new MOU of you know, each team, um, a team at each school, it's gonna give them the opportunity to fundraise um, and also apply for some different grants. Um, you know, step in the right direction and um, he's very happy. And I know the coach um, uh, that will be at Queen Anne's County High School He's a, a great person, um, law enforcement background. Actually. Mark Madison. Yes. Mark Madison. So whenever we have a, a threat at one of our schools, I always get teamed up with him to walk the school with his dog. And he's a good, very, very nice man. Um, so we're excited about that. You know, I've, I've been able to talk to, um, I know, that, you know, John Dolan, a uh, nice young man. And, uh, you know, gives them a sense of pride for their school and a sense of pride for the, the school system you know, being on this team. So kudos to them. And like I said, I, we look forward to next year, you know, each school having their own team. Any questions or? Do we know if any of the students that were seniors, did anybody try to get a scholarship? Because I know that one of the gentlemen that works at Sludwersville Ski, does, I think he might be a recruiter for another, for a college, is he not? Yes, he is. I'm not sure, and it's interesting because I, I had that question when I was talking to Mr. Kindly in my head, and then when we finished talking, I was like, "All right, I forgot that because I think that is important." I mean, you know, we've have had we have had some students, you know, like mountain biking, you know, go to seek scholarships in that. Um, so there there is money there to help support you know the student going to college. But I can follow up on that because uh, you know <clears throat> I had that in my mind, and we got done talking. I'm like, "All right, that was the one thing I meant to ask him." Um, yeah, I, I was just really impressed with, I, Sean's just done so much, so kudos to him as well. I mean, he's worked really hard for many years um, to get this going and, you know, and we're keeping the sport alive and the fact that there's still no injuries in Skeet anywhere ever in their 19 years <laughs> and uh, he kept that going. So that's, that's a good thing. He did a very nice job. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So we'll have team at each place. So we're basically doubling the team in size. At each Actually, quadruple. Yeah. Oh, no, but at each doubling the size of the team and have two teams, so you're going to be two coaches you're going to have at four, each school 40, with 40 ten under in each our coach. system. Rather, at ten students this year between the two high schools. Mm -hmm. combined. Now you have right. twenty at each, yeah. and now we we'll have twenty. So we'll have I was so impressed with the students. I mean, they were just so respectful and so um, appreciative um, of this opportunity to to pursue something that they so obviously enjoyed, and it was very low key, but very. Um, I felt very safe. I mean, they followed really good. Um, and I'll, I'll say this: it, it, protocols. There was a lot of family involvement, you know, from keeping scores to you know assisting with it. It, it was really a, a group effort by all the parents, also, which was nice to see. Thank you, Sid. Thank you. And thanks, Sean, for you know, telling the board. Oh, well. We appreciate what what he's done and, and the the how the freshman he's done doing it. Extremely Thank organized you. gentleman. He is. Thank you. Yep. Okay, moving on to 
current action items. We've had a chance to look at the human resource report. Do you have a motion? Yeah. Motion to accept the human resources and substitute bus driver report, August 17, 2022. Second. A motion second. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Thank you. Our next one is uh, 5-02, policy 241, meal charges and unpaid meal balances. Julie Hickling. Good evening, President Smith, Dr. Salins, board members and executive team. For the record, I'm Julie Hickey, coordinator of food services. I bring before you tonight the third reading of policy 241 on meal charges and unpaid meal balances. Um, there have been no edits made to this policy since the first and second read of it. And again, this is a policy required by USDA for any school, school food service authority that operates the national school lunch program or the school breakfast program. I'm happy to take any questions anybody may have um, before the consideration of approval of this policy. One question I have, and I we've discussed this for six months to a year because it used to be everybody had a free lunch. Now some are going down where some people aren't going to have free lunch as used to. The process of getting to apply for a free lunch, if you, you, st you go to school and all of a sudden somebody didn't do their homework and their parents did not, what would, how long would the process and what would the process be to get them into this program? Um, the process to submit an application is actually very quick. It takes the application itself takes only about five or ten minutes. It can be submitted either online, uh, which is the qu quickest way to do it, or they can also submit a paper application. Um, once that application is submitted and processed, we know within an hour uh, whether or not a student is eligible for a free or reduced meal. So it's very quick. 24, 48 hours. Somebody, it's not a week or two week. Nope process or anything so somebody could get approved uh, all but immediately Correct. for free and reduced if, lunches under the federal guidelines yes like if we identify a student who hits that maximum you know charge on their account say on a Monday afternoon we call mm -hmm. that parent suggest that they maybe submit an application we would know by the next morning that that student could refi receive free meals by the following day and this from another member came if if they go over their ten dollar um, limit yes. in rears, then they would still be offered a meal. Correct. But it would be either a cheese sandwich or a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Is that offered to everybody too? It is. So it's not like somebody's getting something different. They just get a, if that's just the meal that would be if somebody's in the rears past $10, they need to apply to the federal or to, to our system for free and reduced lunches, yes. but they would not be they, they, put out separately. Or they any. would not. Nobody would ever know the difference because, first of all, that, that child would not only just receive a sandwich, they also receive all the other meal components. They'd be allowed to select a fruit or a vegetable and a milk. So the meal that they're receiving on their tray looks exactly like any other student. Um, and we do have peanut butter and jelly available to in every school every day to any student. I mean, and we have expect. elementary students who choose to oh, I eat a peanut butter and jelly every polypoker. day. So, <laughs> so there is nothing that would look different about that meal to anyone walking by a, a student's yeah. table. There's no way to identify that they've received that meal because they don't have money. And so I'm, I'm there. I didn't do my homework. My, my, my daughter or son is in this class. You send me an email. That we can email it. We can hard copy it. So a matter of a day, it could get approved yep. and then moved on. Yep. And we're working closely right now with principals, guidance counselors, getting that information out since it has been two years since a lot of these families have had to submit an application. Um, so we are working closely. I can run reports. We see who is qualified for free or reduced meals in the past. We know when they're getting close to, you know, the expiration of that. Um, and we can call those families and again, encourage them. We can't make them fill it out, but we can encourage them. So we can monitor all of who's coming close to expiring on a previous application. Um, and like we said, work with them. Don, I mean, COVID has been a lot of things, but it's right. it's a, a different thing. People, you know, and once you start giving something to somebody, it, it, it changes, but right. the, the federal rules are federal rules. If you apply and are qualified for reduced, you're talking to me, you're telling me within a day that it's going to be approved. Right. If you're not, 
then we're, you, right. you, you keep going the other way, then there's correct. avenues to correct that too. Absolutely. And like we said, all we can do is, you know, we stress to people we're not taking away free meals. I mean, sometimes you hear, oh, the free meals are gone. They're not gone. If you're eligible for them, you just mm -hmm. have to submit right. the application. And if they're not sure, when in doubt, submit an application. Absolutely. Right, just put it in. I mean, the yeah, worst right. is going to happen, they're going to, you, yeah. you know. Absolutely. Although, thanks to Julie answer my questions, even if you don't qualify, if you go $10 in arrears, you get the meal and they don't end up paying. You don't have to pay. It doesn't matter whether you C correct you approve it. I mean, whether you're, and so, but if they get into the program, we're reimbursed by the federal government. Is that correct? That is correct. Yes. But if they're not, this is saying that there's no fiscal impact, but isn't there a fiscal impact because we're paying for all of these meals at the end of the year? If they're not on the program, we've got a, Sodexo needs paid, do they not? Or somebody needs paid for these meals? The, the cost of the meal is just in Sodexo's product cost to us. Okay. Right. And, but and we, we can't claim, what happens is we cannot claim any of those meals. So if we are providing a student an alternative mm -hmm. meal, we, we cannot claim those meals to the reimbursement. Right. Correct. Right. So, so no, I mean, I we would. So I'm saying, but we're paying them, then, as in the Board of Education, there is a fiscal impact for us. Because we, someone, I mean, if I, let's say I go $10 in arrears my first week. Yeah. And I don't pay the rest of the year. Right. So yes, there, there would be the product the, cost. Right. And, that meal that and while I can understand that scenario that you've offered, also we would have an intervention there. So if right. I see that a student has $10 on their account and that they're coming in every day and still seeking out that free meal, I'm going to be contacting their guardian to say, likely you may qualify so let me help you because maybe they weren't able to fill out the form just needed some assistance maybe language could be an issue um lots of different reasons why um you know maybe it's a new enrollee and Correct. they didn't know so i mean but if we see a pattern of behavior we're definitely going to be intervening in that situation to try to to guide them because likely they would qualify. actually qualify um for that i mean you know and, and we're typically at home in uh, in um other languages as in well, spanish too. as yes. well and um i, I have to um, say thank you. Our Spanish interpreters have done an amazing um, job. Um, they have worked and they have called each of yes. our Spanish-speaking families and walked them through that application. So they are actually our highest number of returned applications right now. So all of our communications go out um, in English and Spanish, but then we actually have, like we said, people who have contacted um, our Spanish population. Yeah, and I've noticed that we're taking every opportunity to be able to get, like we had the migrant program um, the other evening, or like a culminating program, and we had several people there sitting down with um, and assisting to get those applications done while we had them on our school grounds. And as we move through our back to school nights, I know Julie has already reached out to all the principals to ensure that we have people there to help walk parents through the process. I mean, it can be intimidating for someone. Um, any application in and of itself, I think, can be intimidating to anyone. So having someone there that can answer <clears throat> questions and walk through it, it really is a five minute you know, it can be five minutes, um, mm -hmm. but sometimes people just need a little bit of assistance. So providing that assistance can yeah. help. In the application, you can actually select, there's probably 20 different languages on the, the online application itself. You can change the language to any language that any of our families may need. So, but yes, we will be at the back to school nights with iPads, laptops open, encouraging, you know, parents to just fill it out right then and there. And they can fill it out. Anybody can fill it out, you just if you qualify or not. Correct. And so then, you know. did you want to just list a couple of the benefits of if they they fill it out, what it does for the district as a whole? Not only does it provide a meal for Correct. their child at a free or reduced right. price, but it also helps benefit the district it as a whole. It absolutely does. So for students who would fill out that application, qualify for the free meals, um, if they qualify or are eligible for the free and reduced meals, it also would offer them um, some discounts if they um, take the ACT, SAT, um, gives them discounts on college applications, um, and it also uh, provides additional funding for technology and educational purposes for the um, district. So the, that's what our that's what our uh, federal a lot of our federal funding is based on is, yes. is free and reduced lunches. Formulas. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what we're stressing to people is that it is a lot more than just a meal application. There are other benefits um, for those families that qualify. Thank you. We'll have this at our open house or at the things. A parent, it's September, October. Who would be their contact at the school? Would they, should they call the guidance counselor, the principal, teacher? Who, who's the best contact? At the I'm sorry, if they have a question as far as getting the application. Yeah. The, 
I would go either to the front office. Office. Yep. Because okay. they would be able to direct them. So you just go to the front, front office, office to the secretary there or whatever, and, and then they would have direct her, they them the right way through and then, that thing. Yep. And they would have the paper applications if that's how they prefer to do it right there in the front and office. And at every school, they'd have that. They will have them by the end of or the beginning of next week. It will be okay. printed tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Thank you. I appreciate that. Do we have a motion to? Motion to approve the policy number 241, meal charges, unpaid meal balances. Second. A motion and second. Also here say aye. 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 The ayes have it. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you're still here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go anywhere. Me? Yes. <laughs> Okay. The second item I bring before you tonight for consideration is the approval of a 10 cent per meal price increase for the upcoming 2022-23 school year. Um, I provided the historical meal price data for you back to 2015 and you can see that typically there has been a meal price increase every two years. Um, again, due to COVID, uh, we did not increase our prices since 2018. Historically, again, we would have done that increase in 2020. At that time, all of the meals were free to students. Um, so we have, uh, using the required USDA paid lunch equity tool, it was determined that we should increase our prices by 59 cents for this upcoming school year. But we have opted to select the cap at 10 cent increase and carry over the remaining 49 cent into the uh, following school year. Um, so if we were to opt or and approve that 10 cent increase in meals, that would bring, our, bring the breakfast price from $1.50 to $1.60 for all students from the elementary to the middle to the high school level. It would bring the elementary lunch price from $2.50 to $2.60 and the middle and high school lunch price from $2.75 to $2.85. And was this up for public comment? Do we do that or? Third read, right? Th this yeah, is actually read. just a this meal price update. Yeah. It doesn't go yeah, out okay. for com comment or anything. Yeah. Yeah. Like we said, we use that required USDA paid lunch equity tool as our guidance as far as what we can increase that. What well, we can, but the federal government for free and reduced re 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 reimburses at a different rate. Correct. Uh, the higher. reimbursement, whether they're, yes, the reimbursement rate is different, whether it's a free, reduced, or a paid. And this meal. is just some student buying lunch on their own Correct. at this, our system. Yes, this would be the price for any student who um, qualify. Doesn't, qualify. doesn't qualify for a free or reduced meal. And this is not going to be adversely hurt our budget, you don't feel? or Well, this is going to increase our budget yes. um, to better meet and come in alignment Correct. where we should be. Support. I mean, they're, tell no, but, they're but telling they, us we should be actually increasing it by 59 59. cents, and we're saying, well, that's a lot to our families, so we're going to take a step back and just do 10. 10 cents and then we'll revisit it next year Correct. when it's at the 49 cents which probably will be higher next year once Correct. the calculation comes back it out comes probably back. still so, right. be so, at 59 cents yeah. or whatnot yeah i mean that's what that's what that's my question if, if somebody's recommend 59 and we're, and only, we're only doing, doing 10. 10 yeah but we yeah, also Jane. <laughs> right. Powers, i'm sorry right one, one thing that's coming into effect in 23 alone is what we're hearing is a temporary um reimburse additional reimbursement of 45 cents so that 45 cents plus the 10 puts us to where we need to be for this year. Okay. Yeah. Through the end of June of 2023, Correct. there is an additional reimbursement for 40 cents for each lunch meal and 10 cents for breakfast. So again, putting us right within much closer to that 59 cents. So it almost looks like this is, the, we're in our third year, we're going up 10 cents. Yep. Yeah. First time fourth, since 2018. Fourth, fourth, year. Yeah, so yeah. fourth year, right. Fourth year. So yeah, I'm trying to, yeah. That seems, re I mean, seems very, very reasonable, reasonable to the yeah. public. Do you have any other questions? I have a motion to approve. Um, motion to approve the school year 2022-2023 meal price increase. Second. I have a motion and second. All those say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sucky. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Pullen. Good evening, President Smith, members of the board, Dr. Salins, and executive team. <clears throat> My name is Carla Pullen. I'm the facilities planner, Queen Anne's County Public Schools. So I am here this evening to talk to you about and request your approval for a reallocation of some state and local funding that is already allotted for several of our 
capital improvement projects. So if you will recall, back at the end of June, I was here and I let you know that we had bid three different projects for roofing and they all came in very far over budget. That was the Bayside Elementary School roof, the Kent Island Elementary School roof, and the Kent Island High School roof. We asked for your approval to take those funds so they didn't go into the reserve at the state level for anybody to use. We asked you to allow us to request that they be put into a fund for Queen Anne's County Public Schools. So the funding from the state for those three projects is now sitting in a fund for Queen Anne's County to use. So the first order of business tonight is to request your approval to ask the state to move some of that money back into the project accounts for us in an effort to get some of these projects under construction and under contract. And to clarify, we have not approved contracts for these yet. The first order of business is just to get the money aligned where it needs to be. And that's why we ask your approval tonight. So the first port part of this under from the state, reallocate Queen Anne's County Public Schools funds from the state reserve account. The first number that you see is Bayside Elementary School. We would ask the state to allot $538,790. That is their 51% split. So we split that cost 51%, the county comes up with 49%. So that is 51% of the bid cost. The second portion is Ken Island Elementary School, $545,443. That is the 51% of the bid that we received. The state part is fairly easy. We had a reserve account. We are just pulling out the funds that we need. And to give you a little bit of background, where the additional funds are coming from is our Kent Island High School roofing project. As you recall, we had $4 million for that. It came in at almost nine. We are going to come back to you in a couple of months and ask for capital funding for that again next year at the correct amount. So you will be seeing that project in our CIPI request coming again. We're not abandoning that project. We're just going to try to use some of the funds to take care of the projects that have lapsed and then we'll go back for funding for Kent Island High School. The second part of this from the commissioners, this is where it gets just a little bit trickier. So in fiscal year 2021, they gave us capital funds for Bayside Elementary School and Kent Island Elementary School to replace the roof. It wasn't enough to make that 49% based on the bids that we got. So we're asking this 280,000 is the amount of funding we currently have plus another 280,000 to be added to that pot to make our 49%. Ken Island Elementary School, we have available funding. We're asking to add another 212,000 to that pot to give us the available funding. And that gives us the full totals for the bids. Can I answer questions? I know this is very convoluted and difficult and there are many pots of money that are coming together. Again, we're not asking to do the projects right now. We're just asking for your permission to go to the state to have that money put back into our accounts and go to the county to ask for some of that money to be reallotted. What kind of time frame are we talking? Because my concern is since these projects just keep going up, I mean, it seems like sure. exponentially, what kind of turnaround are we looking at to get these bids and to get an approval so that we so that they don't yes. go up? And are we going to get a fixed firm for a certain amount of time? So yes. We don't have to anticipate an additional. Yes. Great question. So we currently have open bids that are available for use. We are going to try, if we get the approvals tonight, to come back to you in September to get an approval for the contract. There is a hope that with some moderate weather, we would be able to do some of that project in the fall. But if that's not possible, then we can go ahead and get our materials purchased and stored until spring or maybe early summer of next year so that we're not seeing another price increase. We, the Kent Island High School was $4 million. I'm assuming the state was close to $2 million or a little, you know. Yes. How long, this adds up to a little bit over a million from the state, Sarah. Yes. How long does that stay in our account? Is there any expiration date on that for the state or now it's in our account that we can just? 
it's in our reserves until we ask the state to use that we'll money. We'll go back in general funds. We have time. We have time to do that, but we certainly hope within the next year or two. Understand. That we're well, going we got to. projects we have to do. Understand, but but it's not a. We're not underneath the gun no. as far as six months or something from there. No, at this point we are not. But what I really see the big thing on here is we're going to the county and asking them for almost five hundred thousand dollars of additional capital funds to come out of the Kent Island High School they funding that was allotted. allotted. We were already, allotted, so we just, we it, were okay. already allotted. We just want to move it, it from Kent okay. Island High School for to Robin Bayside Peter. and Kent Island Elementary. So we're just not asking that 500 to come out of Kent Island, the same that they've already offered that. That's correct. And just move the rest of it back farther out. That's correct. Okay. And, yes. And can you just share, like for Kent Island High School, obviously the project goes well over, you know, we couldn't do it because of that, but it's also a full replacement, is that correct? Which That's is correct. something that you cannot necessarily do while occupied. Right. And so we couldn't even do that in the middle of the year if we were to get additional funding. But these two projects we can do while occupied. And can you talk about why we can do them while occupied? Yes, that's correct. So specifically Bayside Elementary School, this is the metal portion of the roof that we would be replacing and is mostly over our public areas. So it's not over our learning spaces. It's over the cafeteria, it's over the gymnasium, it's over spaces that we would be able to have some flexibility to work without really interrupting the educational process. So that's part of the reason that we feel that we may have some flexibility in doing some of this through the fall. The Kent Island Elementary School is a little bit more complicated because it is their flat roof section. Some of those are over top of classroom areas, but the thought is that we would be able to potentially do the maybe even over the Christmas break if the temperatures remain moderate. We've been lucky in the past several years that we don't have as many cold spells as we did where the temperatures drop below 40 degrees, so the contractors are able to work more consistently. With our Kent Island High School roof, the hope is that we would be able to do some of the classroom sections during a summer break because that is where we would have the most impact and then if we had to work around a summer schedule we could do some of the flat roof sections there during a time where students were in the building as well they are over our more public areas so we're trying to be as flexible as we can to assist the contractors to get them in when it works with our schedule as well as with their schedule because that will help us to keep prices down too and then just to clarify, so you said the commissioners had allotted us for just over $4 yes. million dollars for the Kent Island High School project, which obviously came in way over budget. So what we're asking them to do right now is to, instead of using that money for Kent Island High School, which we've pushed a year, to use that money to where for these other two projects. So they've already allotted us the money. We're just going to use it towards two other projects and then have to go back again and ask them for additional funding to do Kent Island High School. That's correct. So we have 2.4 million from the county for Kent Island High School. We're gonna take some of that to complete the projects that we haven't, and then anything that's still remaining, we would ask them with our next capital request to just move that money into the Kent Island High School project as well. Mr. Pender, security when we're working on roofs and construction guys while schools are going on, especially the high school the what concerns do you have about that the high school would be done mainly in the summertime so that really wouldn't be an issue all of the employees if we were able to go forward with what miss Poland was saying they all have to be um, background checked um, they have to be you know go through the proper procedures before they're even allowed on the school site um, this wouldn't be where they would be interacting with the children you know, it's, you're confined to the roof. It's not, you know, passing through. Um, it is something that's done in quite a, a bit in the larger school systems just to keep up with it. Um, yeah, it, it, as long as everything is, you know, everybody's following the same procedures, I, I don't see a problem with it. But there's a, there's a venting issue as far as employees. They yes, just are yep. not is getting anybody to work on these projects. They're already they, stopped because they're working in a school environment. That's correct. The state requires that. Any other comments or questions from the board? Entertain a motion. Motion to approve the capital funding reallocation request to reallocate state and local capital funding. Motion to have a second. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Aye, aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. Mr. Pender. 
Good evening, President Smith, Dr. Salins, board members, executive team. For the record, uh, my name is Sid Pender, Chief Operating Officer. Tonight, I am seeking um, approval to for a contract with Delaware Elevator to modernize and repair the hydraulic passenger elevator at Queen Anne's County High School. Um, Delaware Elevator, uh, we have a contract with. They do all of our inspections. Uh, they do our monthly walkthrough inspections. Uh, during the last state inspection, the um, cylinder, the hydraulic cylinder failed, and that elevator was installed in 1966. Um, so with that being said, um, the cost of the replacement of the cylinder is $54,597. All of the controls that are there need to be upgraded. And this is an emergency procurement. With that being said, if we wait any longer, October, the regulations in Maryland change. It's gonna add another thirty to $40,000 to this, to this bill. But if we do what we need to do now, we're grandfathered into um, the regulations. So the tough part is, and I, I've, I've talked to Mr. Schreckengast um, and also our staff, we're looking at a, an eight to 10 week turnaround. Um, and when I say that, I'm talking about getting the parts and the equipment in for it. Um, so this is very crucial that we, we move forward with it. Um, currently, we do not have any students that require the elevator, but you never know with athletics, injuries, somebody breaking a leg, um, really, you know, it's gonna be a toll. We're gonna have to change classes and move things around. Um, but again, you know, Delaware Elevator has, has been the company that we've worked with um, and has done all of our inspections and knows exactly what's going on with it. Any questions or comments? So this, it's going to be a whole new elevator system, pretty much. It's going to be the elevator in the same. Will remain so. the same. We will upgrade all of the controls and hydraulics. Um, the hydraulics. And I, I went back and looked at the um, the inspections for the past couple of years, and you know, they've been kind of just piecing it along. Um, you know, the recommendation was a full replacement. Obviously, you know, that's you know. That's going to take a long time and a lot of money. So this is the best route for us to go. Um, again, like I said, it's about the eight, ten week turnaround, which you know does bother me. But that's the best we can do with what we got. So right now, the, the high school has no ability to get to the second academic wing. As long you have to use the stairs. So right now, when we're taking laptops up top, when we're moving furniture, it is all done by the stairwell. I, I'm not implying anything about mm -hmm. Delaware Elevator by saying this, but does it not seem a little unusual that the, the company that does the inspections are also the ones doing the repair? I mean, it. So that's a good, that's a great question. And actually a year or two ago, the state of Maryland required a third party. So there's also a third party that comes and verifies everything that goes on. So Delaware Elevator does it. And then two years ago, I believe it was, there's a third party that comes to validate everything that they're doing and they're looking at. But like I said, it's if you go back and look at the records, it's we, we've been lucky the past couple oh, of no, years. Oh, no, I'm not yeah. doubting that oh, no, we you're need fine. a new one. I just, and I feel bad saying it just that I know, I know what you're it's saying. a little yeah. you know, different to have them inspect and to repair. Okay. Okay. And we have elevators in other schools. We've had them, you know, the county. I mean, this is, I mean, I know it's an emergency thing, but it, you, in your opinion, is professional opinion, as far as doing this in the past, it's reasonable as far as? It, it is. I, I, like I said, that's a 1966 elevator. When they renovated that building, nothing was done to the they elevator. They didn't renovate that elevator? No. Did you know we have an elevator company in the industrial park? <laughs> All right. I, I, I don't know if you, I know who knew there were that many, but uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, we do. Any other questions or? Uh, thanks. Let's... Have a motion. And uh, coming out of unrestricted operating maintenance budget, that's? Yes. So. That is correct. 
and that's not going to be a. I mean, it's a, it's an item, but it's not a major burden. No. Okay. Motion it's definitely, says, we'll have to see how it goes. Yeah, it's year. definitely. But the I mean, building so, averages of over 50 years old, I mean, you're, yeah. you might have something else come up. Yeah, we're very, so, I'm con you know, have yeah. a little concern about it. We're going <laughs> to. So if you look at the average age, we were looking at deferred maintenance today. I know I'm kind of getting off topic, but if you're looking at deferred maintenance, the average age of our buildings is about 50 years old. I mean, even though we have some that are fairly, you know, 25 years old, yeah, the average age is about 50. You know, 50 is a new 40. <laughs> so the new Not 30. for buildings. You <laughs> <laughs> don't bother me. The other thing to remember is that you get grandfathered in, but when you start making changes to the building, the, with the regulations, yeah. that yeah. up there. And this is all ADA approved and everything that meets the thing, standards that have to be there. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, in all fairness, though, the, everything in a building, in a school system, takes just a, a wear and tear that you just normally don't get on anything else. And so they are built for 40 to 50 years, as what was, used oh, to be yeah. the standard, but now they need to really be built for 60, 70, 80 years worth of use, to be honest with you. It's, like it's, I said, it, it, in October, the regulations are changing, so that would add another thirty to $40,000 to what we're looking at right, right. now. Uh, accept the motion. All right, motion to approve the contract with Delaware Elevator to modernize, repair hydraulic passenger elevator at Queen Anne's County High School. Fiscal impact amount $149,966. Budget source fiscal year 23 unrestricted operating maintenance budget. Second. A motion second. All those say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Uh, you're still here. Yep. <laughs> One more. Um, Tonight I'm seeking approval um, contract with the Bauer Mechanical to replace water heater at Mattapique Elementary School. Um, the heat exchanger on the existing water heaters failed due to the age of equipment parts no longer available. Um, we're looking under the emergency procurement um, section to have this approved. It's a total of $33,900. Um, we did ask another company to help. Um, they did not provide any kind of documentation for us. The health department has cited us for that, um, for the hot water, as you can imagine. Um, maintenance was able to limp us along for a little bit and put in two temporary uh, units, but just the volume of water that goes through there a day, it, it, it can't hold up. Um, so I'm seeking approval of that from the uh, FY22 unrestricted operating maintenance budget. Any questions? Well, I guess with Jane races or, or Doc, uh, Mrs. Towers, her office. This is 34. We had the other one. I know you never know. Are we getting in better shape or no surprises late? I mean, it's the beginning of the year. It seems like we're getting off a lot. It, it just happens. It just happens. I mean, you, I, know know, you, I mean, it's not. You we know. service them every year and we you know, preventive maintenance and, you know, boilers, chillers, and all that. It's just, just it like your air conditioner at your home or your hot water heater. You just now, how never old is know. This one? Um, that's over 20 some years. 20 some years. At Mattapique. And you got to think, it's not like your residential house where it's just you and your wife or your kids. I mean, this is constant. Constant. And without, especially the cafeteria staff having adequate, they would have to boil, boil the water every day, you know, to make that work. Um, oh, just the washing the hands and yeah. just sanitary things. It's just. It's, and it is. I mean, when they, and, and what some people don't realize is, you know, when these items pop up, they're, they're big ticket items. They're not, you know, something that's just minor. Um, so. Yeah. yeah, I was coughing, choking a little bit when Sid sat down on Monday morning with a couple, of, or last Monday morning with a couple of items that were a hundred and some thousand dollars. So I was like, ooh, cost of doing business, as they say, honestly. Okay. Any other questions? We have a motion to replace the hot water heater at Mattapique Elementary School for the tune of $33,900. So move. Have a second. second. Motion and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. That's the end of our agenda. Does anybody else have anything for this evening? Our next uh, meeting will be September the 17th, our regular school board meeting. And by then, school will be in session. So welcome back, everybody. I have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those aye. Aye. Ayes have it. Thank you.